Welcome to part four of this how to start a dropshipping business from scratch. If you've missed parts one to three, we covered how to pick the products with the most potential. We covered how to find and pick a supplier to supply that product. And we covered the biggest mistakes I see people making typically with their Shopify store. And we did this by actually taking a look at a proven $2.5 million dropshipping store. Today we're going to be focusing on marketing. The format will be the same. We'll start with a tip that applies to some of the biggest mistakes I see people making. Um, and then I'll go through the sorts of things that you should be doing and you should make sure you are 100% crystal clear on before you spend a single penny on ads. It still surprises me to the day. So I have a digital calendar where people can book in um, to have a discussion about mentorship with myself. And it still surprises me to the day where I jump on a Google Meet and they'll say I've spent $1,000 on ads. I've made one or two sales. I don't really know where I'm going wrong. So this brings me on to tip number four, which is if something has not worked, you must, capital letters underlined, you must find out why before you start running any more ads. If you make a mistake, and you don't know you've made a mistake or you don't know how to fix that mistake, you're going to keep making it. When you do anything in life, there's only a select amount of mistakes you can possibly make before you eventually succeed, assuming you don't make the same mistake again. So if you ensure that every time you do something, you find out why it hasn't worked out and then make sure you never do that again, you will progress and eventually you will get to whatever your goal is. This doesn't just apply, I'm going a bit deep here, but this doesn't just apply when it comes to marketing. The amount of people I talk to that say they've tested 50 products and spent thousands of dollars, it's clear they're probably repeating the same mistake over and over again. So no matter how much more they spend, or no matter how many more products they test, they will never get to where they want to be because they're not moving forwards. And the only way you can move forwards is by avoiding the mistakes you've made in the past. On to marketing then. So first and foremost, $100 is nothing. If you have spent $100 and it hasn't worked and you think for whatever reason it should have, then the harsh reality is $100 is just nowhere near enough to truly test whether something's going to work out. If something was literally that easy and that cheap to know whether it's going to be a failure or to know whether it could potentially be a six or seven figure business, it would be too easy and everybody would be doing it. $100 of ad spend is nothing in the grand scheme of things. And unfortunately, that is the harsh reality. And unfortunately, dropshipping has this massive misconception of being a business that you can start with no money. Yes, it is a business, and probably one of the only businesses you can start with quite a small amount of money. And when I say that, I say one to $2,000 if you want to do it to the bare bones, to the bare minimum. But unfortunately, there's still a massive percentage of people out there who think you can start this with $100, $200. And it's just not realistic, to be honest, for 99.999% of people, unless you already have a way of getting traffic onto your store. Point number two is less than three angles is nothing. What I mean by this is basically three ad creatives or three audiences. Again, if it was that easy, if you could put an ad up and within three times of testing and find a winning product that's gonna make you loads of money, that's the other big misconception people have as well is they think that if they wanna make lots and lots of money, they've gotta be selling lots and lots of products. That's not the case. You can make easy over six figures with just one product. And if it was easy as testing just three different ad creatives and getting to that point, again, everybody would be doing it. You have to be willing to go to the lengths that people are not willing to go to. And three angles, in my opinion, is just not enough. That's not to say you might find and stumble upon that one angle your very first time that does really well. That is a possibility, but in reality, you need to be testing more than this. Every week on my channel, I feature different successful stores I've found on flipper.com. When I say successful stores, I mean minimum five to 10K profit every single month. We jump into the ad library and every single one, it's a common theme across the entire board, have more often than not, at least a hundred different ads in that ad library because they have tested, tested, tested to find what works, especially if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner, you have no experience. You won't spot the good and bad in things, and therefore it's gonna take you 
longer and more time and fortunately more money without the correct guidance to find what actually works. Which brings us on to point number three, which is know what you're looking at. So the reason why I like marketing so much, and it's probably my strong suit out of all these four things that I've gone over, is because it's numbers and numbers are very black and white. There's no gray areas. Whereas if you compare this to say product selection, it's more of an art because there's lots and lots of different things that go into it. Opinions are very subjective and there's no way of truly knowing whether it's gonna be a good product or not until you've tested it. And then when you have tested it, it's numbers that come back and the numbers do not lie. So know what you are looking for. Know what a CPC is and what it represents. Know what a CPM is and know what that represents. If you do not understand the data in your ad account, then you should not be spending a single penny on ads because you will get $100, $200 down the line and you won't have a single clue what you've achieved in return for that. When in reality, what you have achieved can be quite valuable, but unless you understand the numbers, what to look for and how to react to certain circumstances if your CPC is really high and what that means and then how you react to solve that issue. Until you understand these things, then you will truly never be able to run profitable marketing campaigns sustainably and consistently. Point number four is know your breakeven rice. These are the basics. Unless you know what number you need to be achieving inside your ad account, how do you know if you're making money or not? So I'll show you quickly inside a tool, the resource that I built for the people that I work with on a one-to-one -one basis. If you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video. I'll give you more details on how to apply and get more information. So what you need to do is you need to be putting in the cost of your product. So let's say it costs you 14, oops, let's say it costs you 14 pounds to deliver your product and you're selling it for, let's say 61 pounds. Your break-even price is 1.3. Now, obviously, this is ballpark numbers. It doesn't take into account taxes and things like that, but it gives you a good starting point. It gives you a good aim number to aim for. Your ROAS inside your ad account needs to be more than 1.3. Otherwise, you know for a fact you are losing money. And where this comes into play is this. So you focus your budget in the right areas. So many different things you can target inside an audience or so many different areas that you can focus on. So again, another common mistake I see people making is they'll run some ads, they'll spend $100, $200, they haven't seen a profitable return um, for the money that they've spent, so they move on to the next thing. Instead of actually looking inside where they've spent that money on the age ranges, on the genders, on the countries, um, on the different states, if you're advertising in America or the different cities or counties inside the UK, you can look at the different placements, you can look at the different times of day. There's so many different areas that you can look at and break the numbers down by because what you might find is that there's one or two areas in there. There's potentially an age range or potentially a gender or potentially an area of the country where you are profitable, but Facebook just hasn't put enough of your budget into that area. So until you actually go in, look at the numbers and see where your best returns, your best gains are coming from, remove everything else and remove the dead wood until you understand that you might need to do that then again, your chances of being profitable and sustaining that in the long run is gonna be very difficult. And then I'll leave you with this last one, which is know what you are doing. So when you were running ads, you were doing one of two different things. You are either testing to see what works, um, or you are scaling, which is where you're betting heavily on certain areas of your audience or a very specific demographic because you know that's where you're getting the response. You must be doing one of these. If you're not doing either of them, then in my opinion, you're wasting your money. So to give you kind of like a um, night and day example of this is that if you have $1,000 to spend on ads, don't break that into 10 different ad sets and $100 on each ad set to all age ranges, all genders, lots of different interests and audiences because you might see nothing back in return and then you have no money to spend on scaling. If you take 10% of that $100 and split that across the 10 different ad sets, so $10 per ad set, after the $100 is spent, put a pause on anything that isn't making you money, then jump into the numbers, jump in and find the right areas, find the best age range, find the best demographics, find the best countries, whatever it may be, then spend 900 of those dollars in the areas that are giving you the best returns. You will dramatically increase your chances of success because the majority of your budget will be going in the right places and with that being said guys i'm going to leave it there for now any follow-up questions whatsoever please do leave them in the comments i will see it and i will respond to you if you are looking for some more information on a one-to-one -one mentorship um, somebody to hold your hand through this entire process and help you avoid these very mistakes 
um, and talk you through on a call through how to do these things in a bit more detail. And what you need to do is check out the video description below this video, click the mentorship link, it'll take you through to a series of questions. It's a chance for me to kind of get to know where you are now, your current level of experience, what you'd like to achieve in the next one, two or three months time with my help. And if you have a goal that I believe I can help you achieve, then it will take you through to my calendar where we can book a time and date for us to jump on a call together, um, have a friendly chat, get to know each other, um, see if we're going to be a good fit for each other and ultimately get you to where you want to be. So if that sounds good, head down there now, click that button, book in that call and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys. I will see you in the next one.